Hello there. Pop-ups are web page elements that display in front of other page content. They appear on your screen with a message or prompt an action, such as signing up for an email list or downloading a content offer. To go back to the main content, the user must engage some sort of action with the pop-up, such as completing an action or closing the pop-up. Pop-ups can have several functions and triggers. Today, we are going to build together a simple pop-up that will appear if the page is inactive for a certain period of time or is triggered by a button. We will then add triggers to two different types of pop-up, one which will appear when the user scrolls down and the other when the user is about to leave the page. Let's begin with the inactivity and button pop-up. We've set up a simple page. Let's add a modal block outside the other elements, which will become our pop-up. Let's name it Inactivity and Button Pop-up. In order to see what we are building, let's add a temporary width of 50%. Open the Modal Style tab and set a temporary width of 50%. We are not going to set a height because the elements we add will give the height. Now let's open the Primary tab and the Colors tab and add a background color. Our design has a light grey background. We want the pop-up to appear in the middle of our page, so let's center our pop-up by opening the Modal Style tab and selecting Align Center and Justify Center. You will see the pop-up disappear because we didn't give it a height. Let's add a Columns block which will do this for us. With the pop-up selected, add a Columns block and choose the two columns variation. You will now see the pop-up reappear. When the pop-up appears, we want the background around the pop-up to appear slightly darker so that the pop-up shows more clearly and attracts the user's attention. To do this, with the pop-up selected, add a grey overlay in the place of the default overlay. Select the first column and add an image block. With the image block selected, open the Primary tab and the Source tab. Add an image. Open the Size tab and add a height of 530 pixels. Set Object Fit to Cover so that the image fills the column without being distorted. Now, let's round the borders by opening the Design tab, the Borders tab, the Radius and Width tab and setting an equal 10 pixel radius. Let's add a little bit of space between the image and the edge of the modal block. So with the pop-up selected, in the Design tab and the Margin and Padding tab, open the Spacing tab and add an equal 5 pixel padding. And to match the image, let's add an equal 10 pixel radius to the pop-up. Now let's turn our attention to the second column, which will contain the instructions we wish to give to the user. We want our elements to be one above the other, left aligned and justified. So, with the second column selected, open the primary tab and set a flex display, a column direction, a flex starter line and justify center. Let's add a heading. Input your text and style as required. We have already set Inter as our global font, as we want an easy to read typeface that grabs the user's attention. In the Typography tab, let's set a font size of 3EM. We are using EM instead of pixels as it scales more readily. Let's set a bottom margin of 40 pixels to distance the heading from the rest of the content below. Now, selecting the second column, let's add a paragraph and input our content. Let's set a size of 1.2EM and a bottom margin of 10 pixels. We want our second paragraph to have the same styling as the first, so let's use the Quickly Linking feature, which allows you to have one main block that controls the style of other blocks. With the paragraph selected, click the Link Copied Blocks icon. When active, it should change to orange. Copy using the keyboard shortcut. 
Now select the second column and paste in the link copied paragraph. With the second paragraph selected, change the bottom margin to 40 pixels as we want it to be spaced further from the button we are about to add. With the second column selected, add a button. Input your text, which should be something short that encourages the user to click. With the button selected, in the Typography tab, set a font weight of 600 to make it stand out. Now, let's set up the button background. Let's open the Color tab and set a chosen background color. We want the color to change when we hover, so in hover mode, set a darker color as required. Return to normal mode. The button looks a bit thin, so in the margin and padding tab, let's set a top and bottom padding of 15 pixels and a right and left padding of 25 pixels. Let's round the borders for a smoother look. Open the Design tab, the Borders tab and the Radius and Width tab. Set an equal 5 pixels border radius. Let's set up a smooth transition, so in the Effects tab, open the Transitions tab. Click the plus icon to add a transition group. Set a duration of 0.4 seconds. We now have to link the button to where we want the user to be directed. So, with the button selected, in the Primary tab, click the Link icon to open the Link modal. Remember to toggle Active On. Enter your desired URL. If the user does not want to follow your suggestions, we need to add a way of closing the pop-up. To do this, Let's set up a closing icon. With the pop-up selected, add an icon. In the Icon tab, make sure that Active is toggled on. Choose your closing icon, in this case a cross. You will no longer see the icon as it requires a size. Set a size of 16 pixels. And in the Colors tab, set a background color, in this case light grey. Change to Hover mode and set a darker color. Return to normal mode. The icon is difficult to see, so in the margin and padding tab, let's set an equal 10 pixel padding. Finally, let's round the borders, so in the border tab, set an equal 10 pixels radius. We want the closing icon to be at the top right corner, so changing to the design tab, open the layout tab. Open the position tab and set position to absolute so that it is positioned absolutely within the pop-up window. Let's place it 5 pixels from the top and 5 pixels from the right. The hover transition could be smoother, so let's copy the transition duration we set previously. Select the button, open the Effects tab and the Transitions tab and click the Copy icon. Select the Cross icon and click the Paste icon and paste the transitions effect by using keyboard shortcuts. Return to the Primary tab and open the Link Modal. Toggle Active On. Set Type to Action. Set Action to Modal. Set Type to Close. We have to add the block ID to identify the block that we wish to close. So, in the Navigator, right-click on the pop-up and click to copy the block ID. Paste into the Block ID field using the keyboard shortcut. Things look a bit squashed, so let's add a bit of breathing space. With the second column selected, open the Margin and Padding tab. Set an equal 40 pixel padding. That looks better. We need to give our Inactivity and Button pop-up its correct size. So selecting the pop-up, open the Design tab and the Sizing tab and add a maximum width of 700. Remove the temporary width. Now, we need to do the important part, which is to set up the trigger for the pop-up. Open the Trigger tab. You will notice that there are a variety of ways you can make your pop-up appear, such as when the page loads, on-click, on-scroll, when the user scrolls down to a particular element on the page, after a period of inactivity, when the user is about to leave the page, or when the user arrives on the page at a specific point through a URL. In our example, we want the pop-up to appear after inactivity. Set inactivity period to 2 seconds, as we want the pop-up to appear after 2 seconds of user inactivity. 
There are several choices available for when you want the pop-up to appear again, such as every time, which is the default, up to as many times as you specify, after as many days as you specify, or never, if you just want it to appear once. Since we want to show our pop-up every time the user visits the page, let's leave the default every time for the show again property. We want the pop-up to appear from the bottom center. There is a default fade animation if you do not want to set one. But as we want a particular effect, we will set one up. In the Animation tab, set Animation to Slide in Bottom Medium. And we want to set a duration to 0.4 seconds. Let's save and check it out on the front end. We also want the pop-up to appear when the user clicks the button in the header. Select the Surprise Me button and open the link modal. Make sure Active is toggled on. Set Type to Action. Set Action to Modal. Set Type to Open. As before, right-click on the pop-up and copy the block ID. Paste the copied ID into the Block ID field using the keyboard shortcut. Now, let's save and have a look on the front end. We have set up two other pop-ups to show you some of the other ways you can integrate pop-ups into your page. But first, let's take a moment to talk about where you should position your pop-up. The position of your pop-up can have an impact on how effective it is. Placing your pop-up in the center of the screen, as we did for the inactivity pop-up, makes the pop-up hard to miss. Placing it at the bottom of the page is less intrusive and can work for pop-ups with less urgent content. Placing your pop-up in a sidebar is useful for pop-ups that relate to content on the page and allow the user to continue reading other content. An exit intent pop-up can appear at the top of the page as this is often where the user leaves and so can grab the user's attention in a more efficient way. Let's set up our exit intent pop-up. The exit intent pop-up as we have seen, appears when the user is about to leave the page, so we want to position it at the top of the page. For this, with the pop-up selected, open the Modal Style tab and set Align to Flex Start. This will place the pop-up at the top of the page. Now, let's set up the triggers. Open Trigger tab. Set Appear to on Exit Intent. We want this pop-up to slide in from the top, so in the Animation tab, Set animation to slide in top. Set duration to 0.2 seconds. Save and check it out on the front end. Our final pop-up will appear as the user scrolls down. We want to place it to the right of the page to grab the user's attention as they scroll down. With the pop-up selected, in the Primary tab, open the Modal Style tab. Set Justify to Flex End, which will place the pop-up to the right of the page. Now, open the Trigger tab. Set Appear to On Scroll. Set Direction to Down, which is the default setting. Set Amount of Scroll Distance to 2%, which means that 2% of the page must be scrolled through before the pop-up is activated. Let's set up the animation as we want this pop-up to slide in from the right. In the Animation tab, set Animation to Slide in Right. Set Duration to 0.4 seconds. Let's save and have a look on the front end. And that's how to set up three useful pop-ups on your page.